This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Get it right here. Hi, it's the Ramble. I'm Alex. Oh man, oh man, it's Chevitz. Yeah, okay, and let's see Bubbles. There he is. And now let's go talk to Bubbles. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we like to check in with Larry Bubbles Brown because he's so smart. <laughs> I have a room temperature IQ, yes. Yes, a room temperature IQ. <laughs> I never heard that one before. Hey, really? <laughs> yeah, that's an old one, yeah. Uh, really? Room temperature. Room temp IQ. Hmm. You're amazing. You're amazing. Well, who's the, uh, who's the smartest person you've ever interviewed? The smartest? You know, I could have told you that when I was smarter. Uh, I'm trying to remember. The smartest person I've ever interviewed... God, I could have told you that a few years ago, but I can't remember who it was. Yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, I've interviewed some people that amazed me as to how bright they were, you know. Um, Probably most people from entertainment, not that bright. Not that bright, but not that stupid either. I mean, I didn't, I, uh, uh, I guess I didn't seek out personalities who I knew would be stupid. All right. So, so, you know, I mean, uh, there are people who will interview anybody. And then there was me, and I would sometimes turn people down because I figured they were just too dumb or they didn't have a lot to say or they were plugging a movie and that's all they, that, that was all that was on their agenda, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm Or people to, that didn't have a personality. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who there was. There, I know there were a couple that I went, gee, he's bright or she's bright. Uh, but I can't remember who they were now. Um, people that you would thought were maybe a little dumb. Uh, I'll tell you people that I've interviewed that I thought would be smarter. That'd be good, uh, yeah. The, the main one I remember is John Lennon. You know, you think he would be really bright and really smart and really up on things, right? But no, he was really a, a savant. I mean, what he did, he did wonderfully. But that didn't necessarily make him bright. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, Interesting. So, yeah, so that doesn't make people bright just because they can write a good song. It doesn't mean they're smart. So, you know, I... I uh, uh, you know, I I I, I have a, a certain, but I'm trying to think. You, you that's a very good question you ask. Well, I thought uh, you interviewed. Uh, she was very neurotic, which you usually indicates intelligence. Or uh, I thought Camille Paglia was kind of intelligent. She's very very intelligent, very intelligent, and she and I got along. That was the you did, yeah, yeah. That was the strange part about it. it you would think the two of us would not have gotten along. Most people now that I mention, you mentioned, uh, what's her name again? Camille Palia. Camille Palia. Palia. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Camelia Palia, that, that, that um, not many people remember who she was, you know. She's kind of a, she's a, I can't remember, you interviewed her in October of 92. Uh, how, do you, uh, how do you remember these things? I do remember. I don't know why I remember. It was right, I think it was right before yeah, the election. Yeah, it, that's why. And she was, yeah, yeah. she came in, was freaked out by the studio audience. So you had to take her into a I small took, studio. I had to take her into another studio and do the interview there because she didn't want to talk in front of an audience. Yeah. Right. I think she was paranoid about things. She was, yeah. Because everybody was out to get her. All right. And I wasn't. I just wanted to interview her. And we had a very nice conversation. Mm -hmm. But I can't remember, was she right or left? I can't remember. Or was she She was a feminist, but she had some, uh, she leaned to the right on certain issues, so some of the feminists hated her. I see, that was it. Yeah, I tried to remember yeah. why she was disliked, you know. 
Yeah, she was pretty controversial at the time. Yeah, um, she uh, she was she was, but she was bright. But I'm trying to, you know, you talk about people who are bright, uh, and you didn't, especially when you didn't expect them to be. Uh, and I, uh, there are a couple of people that I used to say, boy, he's bright. He's really bright. Really smart. Um, Emo Phillips was very smart. Yeah. You know, um, right winger, if I remember correctly. Um, was he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We would, we would, uh, at parties, we'd sit in the back of the room, uh, discussing politics together. Not something you would expect out of Emo Phillips. No. <laughs> you know, and he wasn't doing the voice. You know, he was just doing it. I, I'm trying to, boy, that's a great question, and I'm uh, my mind lately is so bad. That what it's, about uh, Penn? <laughs> Penn Gillette? Penn Gillette's yeah. bright. Penn's smart. I think he, he thinks he's smarter than he is. Okay. But he's, he's quite bright, and I enjoy Penn. You know, I'll tell you who I who was intelligent and who I really uh, uh, liked a lot is is Teller. Um, Teller's very very smart and very bright and ve- knows about everything. Okay. Wow. Uh, Penn is a little more. Um, he has a few things he really is interested in, and that's it. You know. Okay. Well. Uh Norm MacDonald used to say, if you want to be the smartest guy in the room, act like the dumbest guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God, that's a great question, and, and you threw it on me. If you'd thrown it on me a couple of days ago and said, we'll talk about this, I might have done some thinking. But it used to be that I, I forget all the people I've really interviewed, you know? Um, you should make a list. Yeah. I'm trying to think of who. Well, you were one of the brightest I've ever interviewed. Oh. <laughs> uh, how's that? <laughs> or, not, not Mr. Room Temperature IQ, me. It, well, you, now, you don't think you're smart, do you? I think I'm like, uh, I think I have gaps of certain areas of, like, technology and things like that where I yeah, literally that, that, feel like that, I'm retarded. But that has nothing to do with being smart. You know, being intelligent. You're intelligent. There's no question about it. I wouldn't be talking to you right now if you weren't. <laughs> you know. Or maybe I'm just taking sympathy on you. I'm taking... Yes, uh, I could be. Yeah. But anyway, so... Um, so I think uh, good comics are really tend to be smart, uh, don't you think? Because they're kind of... You have to be kind of quick and sharp and... It, well, yeah. God, you know, I mean, it depends on the comic. Like, you know, I mean, when you're going to talk about bright, you know, you're talking about people who are very aware of the world around them and uh, have a lot of information stored in their heads, and that's smart, you know. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I love Bobby Slayton, but I wouldn't say Bobby Slayton is smart, (laughs) you know. (laughs) I mean, no, I mean, I I don't know if I could talk about a lot of things with him, okay. Um, But... He is one of the most brilliant comics alive. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, they're, they're, just because somebody's good at something doesn't make them smart. They are good at that. All right? I would bet Woody Allen is very smart. I would say so. I mean, I've never met him, but it would seem to, you know. Although, you know something? i got to tell you. Uh, th- does being smart hurt a comedian? You know, does it does it kind of limit him in a way? I mean, we I found with actors, I think one of the brightest actors around, I never interviewed him, supposedly was Robert Vaughn. Uh, Robert Vaughn was the man from Uncle. Uh, was he wrote a book, for instance, on uh, on the uh, uh, the blacklisting back in the fifties? Uh, yeah, very, I think he's fairly political. Yeah, very bright but never had that great a career. You know what I'm saying? In other words, yeah. he was very bright, but that didn't translate into success in acting. If anything, sometimes it comes between you and acting. I would think like if an audience senses that you're smarter than they are, they're not going to like you. Right. They're not going to like you. 
and and um, also it, the intelligence has a, I don't know I, I I don't know how to state this so that it makes any sense at all but then again I don't make any sense at all anyway these days so. <laughs> we're not supposed to at our age <laughs> boy I'm telling you lately it's just been terrible I'm lightheaded and things like that and I've been doing my positional vertigo exercises yesterday I did them yesterday and I feel a little better today but man I'm telling you I mean like you asked me a question like that there was a time when I would have answered that question in a second because I had an answer, uh, you know. But, I mean, I, I, w I was amazed at a lot of people at how bright they were, you know. Um, and uh, But, for instance, and well, maybe I shouldn't ask you this because you don't want to hurt your reputation, but who's the stupidest person you've ever met up with? <laughs> Oh, there's been so many. I don't think I can single one out. But. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, I used to have somebody about, the, you know, st this person is really stupid. I mean, everybody is is amazed when I tell them that John Lennon wasn't that bright, you know. Or to meet him, you would think he was stupid, okay? In yeah, words, I would have thought he'd have been very political. and. No, he was very, you know, it was it, it, when we would meet up at a party, uh, I would start talking with Yoko because he had nothing to say. You know? Wow. Because Yoko was, oh, very bright. Y Yoko is the most misunderstood woman in history. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that includes Marie Antoinette. You know, um, she was uh, ter terrific. I, I enjoyed talking with her, um, and uh, I, well, I, I'll tell you, Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey, very bright. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> Just to keep talking. <laughs> I have to. Sneeze. Okay. I'll talk through this sneeze. Gilbert would say Gilbert was uh, brilliant. Yes. Gilbert was very bright. I mean, I would I would sit for hours talking with him about stuff, you know. I mean, could you? But I've never seen seen him have a normal conversation. You had one with him? Oh yes, constantly. Every Christmas, we'd go to this party together, and we'd go off in the corner and start talking. Wow. You know, and just about stuff. Yeah. No. Uh, I, uh, I I and I love Gilbert too. He was just a terrific guy. You know. Was he a happy guy? Mm. -mm. I think so. I think he was much happier once he met Dara and then had a kid. Uh, you know, he. Uh, uh, how many kids did he have? They have one or two. I can't remember. I guess he married late in life. Yes, he married very late in life and became a father late in life. And I, I, I could only imagine. People would say, "Well, what would Gilbert be like as a father?" I think he was terrific. You know, I mean, if I were a kid, I would just adore Gilbert because he was as childish as I was, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's um, a good point. But he he was very, he was he was quite bright, you know? Um, but I'm trying to remember any comedians that I really felt were exceedingly bright. I, You know, a lot of them are bright because their humor is bright. Yeah. You know, I would imagine... Proops? I, Proops? Very bright. Yeah. 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 Um, Proops was, uh, Greg Proops is bright. Um, um, I'm trying to think who else I really, really thought was, you know, really smart. And I can't remember now. See? See? You don't ask me on a, on a, on a, well, on, well, on a Tuesday. We'll probably have the answer by next week. <laughs> I'll probably have an answer right after we uh, stop talking yeah. today. Well, write it down. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I'm going to have to go back and think about it because there were certain people that I went, boy, he's bright. You know, boy, he's smart. You know, I always thought that Nemo was smart because his humor was so, uh, what can I call it, uh, abstract. Oblique. <laughs> oblique, that was the other word I was looking for. He, he, it was so oblique that he had to have a real intelligence there. I mean, I, I think I mentioned to you the one joke that always laid me low because it was so smart was his line about... Um, it, I went to the beach and it said no glass allowed, and he said the reason is probably that um, uh, 
sand is jealous of grass, uh, glass because it's on a lower evolutionary level. Wow. Now, I don't know how many people in the audience got that joke, and I don't know if I said it exactly <laughs> the way job. he told it. But we all know that where does glass come from? It comes yeah. from sand. And uh, so sand would be on a lower evolutionary level than, than glass. And uh, he took that all from a sign that said, no glass allowed on beach or something like that. That's amazing. You know? So, I mean, that's, that's, that's in, that's, when I heard that joke, I went, this man is not stupid. You know? And <laughs> yeah. he, he, just, he just told a joke that maybe no one else in the audience got. You know, so I mean, it it very strange. But um, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think of other people. We people we were uh, around all the time. Who who was the brightest San Francisco comic? Steve Pearl was pretty. Steve Pearl, sharp. yes, Pearl, very very smart. Um, 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 a basket. Uh, Robin. A, a Robin. Very very well read. I knew oh, that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you see, I didn't know Robin that well. You knew him better than I did. Yeah, he uh, was uh, he was always on, so you wouldn't often have a normal conversation well, with him. Well, but, uh, he, the a lot of knowledge. Yeah, the reason why I didn't spend that much time talking with Robin or having a relationship with Robin is he hated me. Because I, well, <laughs> yeah, I don't think he hated you. Well, he hated me because I called him on theft of jokes. See, I always felt that, you know, if you're Robin Williams and you're a big star and you go on The Tonight Show and then you do a Larry Bubbles Brown joke, Larry Bubbles Brown can never tell that joke again because they will say, oh, you stole that from Robin. Yeah, yeah. And Robin really was notorious for stealing like crazy. Let's say adapting. <laughs> okay. But yeah, well, yeah, and if he... If he if you called him on it, he would always, uh, he'd actually give you money and uh, I don't know, I think his brain was like a blender, just oh, put, his, pick things his, up and his, spit it out. Yeah, his wife was always there with a checkbook in case a comedian. That's what I heard. Well, uh, there was one comedian, I'm trying to remember his name now, who at the uh, comedy store literally threw Robin up against a wall and says, don't ever steal another joke from me. And his wife is next to him trying to write a check out. <laughs> Tim Thomerson. Oh, wow. It was Tim Thomerson. Tim Thomerson. Yeah, and, and he was writing a she was writing a check out. He says, "I don't want your lousy money. Just don't steal my jokes," you know. <laughs> uh, and it was I think it was something. It wasn't that he was a thief. It, it wasn't that. He just absorbed stuff around him and wasn't aware of what he had absorbed. Yeah, I think that's really true. I don't think he was a conscious thief. Uh, he was. Uh, somebody told me once they were in a car with Robin. And they said something funny to Robin. And then about two minutes later, Robin turns around and looks at the guy and repeats the joke as though it's his own. Slayton said that. Yeah. Uh, it was, there was something going on there where he was absorbing stuff around him, but he didn't know what he was absorbing. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that was it. So I called him on that because I, and, and he one time said to me, why are you mad at me about that? And I said, because, you know, these comics work so hard to just get one joke uh, and to have it t used by you on The Tonight Show. I mean, I remember once we were in the back room of the uh, Cobbs, uh, the original Cobbs Comedy Club, and uh, there were about, oh, ten comedians who were all watching Robin on The Tonight Show. And as he's talking to Johnny... One comedian after another would go, that's my joke, that's my really? joke, that's <laughs> my joke, you know. And it got to a point where if Robin walked into a room where you were working, uh, he, he, uh, a lot of comedians would just get off stage because they didn't want him stealing their material. I mean, it was that well, bad. He got, he got to himself, got to the point where he wouldn't go in while other comics were on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was aware of the problem. He was and aware, it, yeah. And it was not out of any you know if he did it out of a, a certain sense of oh well i'm robin williams i can steal anything i want to no that wasn't it it was a defect in his in his personality or whatever i mean he just didn't listen to the world around him but he absorbed it, it very strange very strange yeah. and it wasn't evil he didn't do it for any 
I'm sure he probably stole a joke from you, and you he never did it out of any spite because he liked you. you yeah. Know? So I mean, it, it was very strange, and uh, and I think he knew this was a problem he had. And he, yes, he did stay away from the clubs after a while. You know, uh, but uh, I'm Rob, Warren Thomas once said to me that he was at the uh, what was it? What was the comedy club out in the Haight Ashbury? The other, uh, other cafe. The other cafe, and he uh, he said uh, Robin. Walk, uh, he was telling me he was doing his act, and all of a sudden from the back of the room he could hear that familiar Robin laugh, and he just thought to himself, "Well, that one's going to get stolen," <laughs> and it was. And it was, you know, I mean, and it wasn't evil. It wasn't anything. I'm not trying to put down Robin or, or say he wasn't one of the greatest improvisational comics alive. I don't want to denigrate his his memory in that respect. But everybody knew he was a thief, you know. And 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 so I called him on it, you know. And he, I don't know. I often felt he didn't like me because of that. He only did my show once, okay. And he lived in the neighborhood. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> you know. So, but uh, um, what do you, uh, does it bother you when a comic steals a joke from you? It used to, used to a lot. Now it's just, I just figure people do it. And there's not really nothing you can do about it. So, I did a bit on radio that uh, here in New York that I was famous for. It was called Quickies. And what it was is that people would call up the show and then I would just go Quickies and they would have to do a one liner. They couldn't talk from, they couldn't, they couldn't use up more than 10 seconds. Okay? And they'd go to the next caller, Quickies, Quickies. And they, they, they were, some of them were very funny. They were just little one liner lines or whatever. You know, it's just like, you know, I, Quickies. And then somebody goes, I'm with him. You know, and then he go, you go to the quickies, you know. Um, and it was very popular, okay? Well, what I found was that people started stealing it, you know, to do on their radio shows, only they called them something different. A guy by the name of Alan Combs here in New York, who was a dear friend, and I loved him dearly before he died. Um, he stole it. And he said, I hope you didn't mind that I took it from you. He renamed it something else. And I said, nah, you know, good. It's, it's a compliment to have you steal something from me, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but at least he was, but a lot of other people stole it. Sean Hannity stole it and did it on his show under a different, really? with a different name, okay, his radio show. And so uh, um, uh, I often got bothered by that so I just stopped doing it never I don't think you ever heard me do it in San Francisco no no yeah you know, I just stopped doing it people went why don't you do quickies why don't you do I go I, I'm through with that I leave that behind because everybody else was doing it and if I started doing it people would say oh you stole that from Sean Hannity you stole that from Alan <laughs> Combs yeah. and finally when I got back to New York I decided oh the hell with it why give up a good thing simply because I don't want to be I don't want to be thought of as a thief of somebody else's material, you know. And so I started doing it again. And sure enough, I got a call once. And, you know, Alan Combs does that. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, yeah, I know Alan Combs does that. But I did it way before he ever did it, you know. So, I mean, and I, I, I got very defensive. I would, if I found that somebody stole something that I was doing, I would stop doing it. Because I just didn't want anybody to get credit for, you know, uh, my material. Yeah, it was strange. I just never never was bothered by it. I was bothered by it, but not enough to get mad at the person. So. Yeah, I think the entertainment has a history of uh, things being stolen. Y well, yeah, you know. Um, but the trouble is that if you're Robin Williams, you steal a joke, it's... You know something that Larry Bubbles Brown does. All of a sudden, everywhere you go, you go. Oh, well, I heard Robin do that on the Tonight Show. That's his. That's not yours. Yeah. Where do you think he got it, pal? You know. So, <laughs> so that's what I told Robin. I was always right, bothered yeah. by. You know. Um, I had people get mad at me. Well, we can get into this some other time. Uh, get mad at me? Who? Uh, 
were very famous. Uh, and only because I called them on something. John Lennon was one of them. Uh, because I called him on something where he was going to give a group some money as a, and he just never got the money to them. And I finally said to him, you know, I said, you know, nobody says you have to give your money away to anybody. I said, but if you then promise it, they're depending upon it and you should give it to them, you know? And so the next day, the people I was talking to him about got a check, you know? So, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think John kind of liked me, but, you know, Yoko liked me better. Anyway, <laughs> hey, I got. She might have been a better. She might have been a better interview. <laughs> uh, she is was a better interview. Absolutely, absolutely a better interview. Anyway, I, I, it's time to go, my dear friend. Time's flowing again, ladies and gentlemen. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its eighth year of talk, like you've never heard it before. Yes. Thank you very much, Larry. We will talk to you again next week, I guess. You know, there is a next week. You know, we never know. You know, I could drop dead tomorrow. I look healthy. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I'm so preoccupied lately with death that I love talking to Larry because we get into talking about death. He, he That's one of his favorite topics, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. We're two very dark people. Anyway. How are you? It took last night off because Thursday nights nobody calls anyway. And uh, nobody listens. So why not uh, just, you know, dump th uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday. Uh, but then I got to find some place to put uh, my good friend Steve Kravitz. So maybe I would, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, 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 anyway. I got, I got to make some changes in this show anyway. I got to perk it up somehow, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I, I, I'm wondering if I have the strength anymore to do it. That's the strange part about it, you know. It's getting old. It really sucks. Just sucks. Tonight I was eating dinner. And uh, I, I, I literally accidentally, I... Went to take some, it was salmon and a little, little bit of rice with it and on one fork full, and it all fell on the floor because my hand was shaking. And I just got so mad that I just got up from the table and I just walked out, out of dinner and left Marjorie there. And not, we were in a restaurant, it was here. But I just, you know, I just, uh, I'm tired of, of getting of getting old, you know, and um, it really bothers me because I don't mind being old. I don't mind the age. I, I just mind the fact that I, I, I'm just listening to myself with Larry, and I think my voice is kind of starting to get old, you know, and th th that's the stuff that bothers me. Uh, the fact that, you know, I'm eating, and all of a sudden I start, my hands start shaking, and, and, and the food falls on the floor, th that, come on. That's age, you know, but that's not the fun part of aging. The fun part of aging is people give you a seat on the subway. No, they don't actually. They used to, but they don't anymore. So what the hell? Anyway, uh, before we go to our panel, you know, what there is of it tonight, uh, 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 well, I'll tell the story while they're on. I don't want to hold them up, okay, because they're, a bunch of very nice people. Charlie Someone. Wallace is here, and oh, and uh, Jeff is here, mm -hmm. he, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Josh is here, Charlie, yeah. uh, Kevin, and uh, Jeff. You had some audio going through there for a while. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. But it's okay now. It's fine now. I I screwed up the opening tonight too. If you notice. <laughs> That happens too, and then I have to start all over again because I don't want to have a, a not a complete show. It's strange. What happened was I pushed a button here, and the button came, made something else come up. It is even next to a button that I uh, that I pushed. I went to push this. Okay. This is Gabnet. Right. I, 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 I went to push that. Okay, and then. 
what I got uh, was uh, this. <laughs> or this. I don't know. One of these here. I, I can't remember which one. No, it was, yeah, it was this one. I don't know why that came up. It's not. Oh, uh, well, it is. No, it's not right under that one. Eh, I don't know. I can't figure it out. Anyway, so th that's some of the things that happened to me that are not fun. But what the hell? What can I say? So did you all have a good night off last night? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad. Not? I'm glad. Uh, and then today I go, I go on about three hours ago and I look at my Facebook page and I still got the note up from last night that says no ramble tonight. So there are probably people who are just not even going to watch the show because they don't think there's a ramble tonight. So, mm -hmm. Look, I mean, yeah. Alan isn't here, so he must not think there's a, you know, which is, is actually, everybody talk fast before he gets here, okay? Anyway, um, so what was I going to say? Oh, the story I was going to tell, I've told this story before, but, you know, when somebody dies, you got to tell the only story you've got about that guy, right? And uh, yesterday... TMZ reported that Jerry Lee Lewis had died, and then they had to retract it because Jerry Lee Lewis hadn't died. Oh. All right? So I'm laughing, ha, 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 you know, these, these guys, what dopes they are, right? You know? But then today, he died. <laughs> so, you know, he was, what, 87, I think? 87 years old? Yep. Yeah. And I only had a relationship with Jerry Lee Lewis for, you know, one night of my life. What happened was uh, I was, uh, I, was at, I was still, I was right out of my teens. I think I was maybe 19. No, I wasn't even out of my teens yet. But I and another guy decided we got, we pulled some money together and we decided we would have a concert. Uh, uh, or they, they used to call them dances in those days because they didn't have seating. They had like an open ballroom floor and then people could dance if they wanted to and so on and watch the act on stage. And the act we hired was Jerry Lee Lewis. And uh, he came, and we sold, I think we sold the place out if I remember correctly. I didn't lose money. I always remember when I lose money. Um, and, um, and, but the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to me in my life happened that night because uh, Jerry Lee was there and so was his band. And I'm backstage, I'm waiting to kind of go on, get the show started and so on and so forth. And they're setting up all the equipment. And standing next to me is Jerry Lee's, I think guitarist, I think he was a guitarist. And I said to him, I said, uh, we got to talking, you know, how is life on the road? Life on the road's crap, you know, every night it's a different town, you know, whatever. I said, well, I hope this will be a respite for you here. And he, very pleasant talk. And I finally said to him, I said, by the way, is it true that Jerry Lee married his 13-year-old cousin? And he looked at me and said, yeah, that's my daughter. <laughs> the, the most embarrassing moment of my life, I got to tell you. I can't think of one mm -hmm. that tops that. Yeah, so. What would you say next? Uh, th nice to meet you. See you later. You know, I got as far away from him. I got as far away from him in his arm as I possibly could. You know. Let me remove my foot from my mouth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, I th I might have said something like, "Well, she's a very nice girl." <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, you know. But that was my only uh, run-in ever with Jerry Lee Lewis, the killer. <clears throat> They called Some, yeah. several of his wives died, and a lot of people always suspected him. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so uh, he did but, have that aura about him. <laughs> he did have that aura about him, exactly. So anyway, I've been uh, I've been short of breath, and I've been uh, I've been uh, I just started coughing here. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but I uh, I think maybe I have a little long term co long haul COVID is what I think I've got. Um, it just, I just have all the symptoms of the long haul, you know, and they're all mild, nothing terrible, but God, I just, you know, ah, sucks. Anyway, uh, doesn't it, Jeff? Don't get older at all and you'd be okay. Yeah. yeah I, wait, every now and then I thought it'd be nice if I could just stick my heels in the ground and slow it all down, you know? 
there's no way of, of avoiding it, you know? I mean, that's life, you know? I suppose if I have a fear of death, uh, I shouldn't because at least I had the gift of life for this long, and, and what would have been better, not to have to face death by not being born? You know, so, yeah. It's a, don't worry about it. Yeah, well, that's easy for you to say. You're not as close to it as I am. Yeah, well. You know, I mean, who <laughs> knows how much longer I've got. I could live to be 100 for all I know. But, but if I'm in this shape, I don't want to, you know. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, but uh, I don't know. So we, we took uh, 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 Friday, <laughs> Thursday off. Uh, but we might not do it next week. I don't know. I haven't decided. So, but uh, uh, it was it was fun. Uh, there's no uh, very few people here tonight. See, they probably thought they priced all the thing online that said I wasn't doing a show tonight, and that was it. So, uh, yeah, if they could read it. Says 15 hours ago. Yeah, but who reads that? I do. Because you do. Of all my all my <laughs> Facebook crap comes so late that you have to read it nowadays yeah I mean, my yeah. my facebook the shit some of it comes a day late and i've already read some of the stuff and all of a sudden it pops up and says okay here's your stuff for today well shit i've already read it well, you, you know, know or my notifications yeah. come up and i'm reading my notifications and half of them i've already read already wow you know what i it's, the, it's, the, problem... the algorithms on facebook are all fucked up yes yes they're they're just totally jacked up. Oh, I tell you, oh. I I I I don't I, I I just don't get any of it. Okay, I don't think the I don't numbers, understand it. At I don't all. think the numbers I get are right or anything like that. No, I mean you look at it, you look at it, and and I'll read through the day, you know, or I'll flip through it. Sometimes I don't go in there for a couple of days, right? Yeah. Then I go in there, and my notifications will be all backed up, but I just scroll through my news feed and I say, okay, I read that. I read that. I read that. And then I go into my notifications. I don't see nothing that I read. And then mm -hmm. I go out of it and I go back in there a couple hours later. And all of a sudden there's these notifications, all the shit that I already read and everything else. And I'm going, what the hell? You know, it's all bass backwards. Well, they have something new on in Apple. Do you know about this? Uh, I, I just got their newest Ventura, which is their new operating system. And, oh, really? And I, and I never usually first day go with a new operating system with them because it's always fucked you yeah. know but but uh i decided well you know i've got a couple of other ones that i don't care about one of which is in the guest room so if it gets screwed up i can who cares i can fix it okay so i upgraded it and boom everything works perfectly so i did my thing we do for we have a server over here for the show that goes out to the uh, out to the 24 7 feed and uh, I, I upgraded that machine, working perfectly. I haven't done this one yet, though. I'm going to do it over the weekend because I know that if I did it today, it would be screwing up and I wouldn't be able to do a show tonight. <laughs> you know, I just know it, okay? So uh, I'm not going to do it till this weekend. But the new uh, operating system has a mail thing in the mail client where when you send a letter, if you suddenly go, whoops, I shouldn't have sent that, you can bring it back. Oh. You've got 30 seconds. Oh, shit. I think oh. you can set it up so that it will do it. It will set it for me two minutes or something like that. But you basically got 30 seconds. But at least you've got it. You've got a sudden, why did I say that? Boom, you know. Does, does Outlook still do that? Did Outlook do that? I think it did way back in the beginning. You used to be able to pull yeah. back. It still does, but you have to uh request it and yeah you can, only, you can only pull back from people who haven't already read it i mean if they've already right, read right. it you know it won't let you but it will let you if they haven't read it yeah yeah that's that was it because i remember you know i'd at work i'd send out an email go oh, shit i didn't want to put that in there i pull it back and some people ah, too late i already read it you know yeah. that's right yeah yeah well, I, uh, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I, I, I think I could probably use something like that, but it, I'd like it to be able to, you can also set it so that let's say I'm going to send you an email, but I don't want you to get it till three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I can set it so that it will send it at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know. But if, if Outlook has had this all along, why the hell are they making such a big deal out of it? <laughs> Gee, we finally oh. started doing somebody else something else somebody's been doing for the last 10 years? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that about uh, Outlook. I mean, I have Outlook. Um, yeah, what was yeah. Outlook called in the beginning? Uh, was it always Outlook? Well, it became part of the... the um, Office, uh, Microsoft Office package. Yeah, 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 way in the beginning, I thought I didn't know if it was called Outlook or something. I else. mean, it's they don't, don't have their, they don't have their stupidity in their pro. I don't. I mean, I don't know who comes up with all that. Like with Outlook, for example, you can't. If someone sends an email to you or you know multiple people with an attachment, you can't reply all and keep the attachment. You can't reply all with attachment. It, it always takes it off. Right. So if you wanted to keep it attached, you have to forward it, or yeah. you would have to open the attachment, save it, and then reattach. Yeah, but why would you want to resend document? the attachment? Because right. you, you know, like I did it today. I, I, you you send it with an attachment. They yeah. get the attachment, and then if you send, if you do reply all, it shouldn't send it because it's just redundant to what they already have in their in their well. But mail here's but stream. here's the yeah. problem is someone sends out an email with an attachment to three people or four people mm -hmm. and you read it and you say yeah but these other two people need to know that they need to be added to this original chain we don't need to start a whole new one or it gets it'll get lost yeah but they it shouldn't should have be included but you get what you know, i'm they saying should have included the plan engineer and the quality manager on here and they didn't or you need to or they send it to me, but it really needs to go to one of the people who works for me because this is really what they deal with on the day to day. It's yeah. not me. I need to add them, but they need to see it. But so do all the original people. Did you ever? Did you ever fuck up by uh, by getting an email, right? And it, it had a whole list of people that it was made out to, and yeah. uh, you just wanted to reply to the main person. So you replied to the main person, but you hit reply all. And maybe it was something not particularly flattering. Yeah, I mean, I never have. I'm sure people do it, but but I'm just saying, like, but if you go to Microsoft's website and you search for why does it take the attachment off, they their answer is well, when Outlook was designed for this, we assumed that people would not be passing the same attachment back and forth, that they would always open it up and make edits. And then they would save a new version and then reattach that. And I'm thinking, yeah, that sounds fine if you're writing a book. We're not yeah. writing a book here. I'm trying to get this attachment. To yeah. Yeah. Keep. I mean, it, it's just everyone hates it. It's, it's in the business world. It's Forward. stupid, but. You know. to record it and attach everybody onto it. You know? Yeah. But yeah, right. You got to start a whole new chain or something. It's fucking stupid. Wow. wow. I mean, the people who come up with that stuff, they don't. They don't use it themselves a lot or whatever. I mean, you know, so they don't they don't uh, think about that kind of stuff. I mean, or something. I don't know. I mean, but, you know, when when we had the uh, but but why do they have to do that? I mean, when we the email that we had before that was Lotus Notes. And when there was an email with an attachment and you hit reply, when you hit the drop down under the reply, you could reply to all. Mm -hmm. Just reply, mm -hmm. reply with attachment, or reply without attachment. All you had to do was select reply with attachment, and you could do whatever you want with it. And the original now that would be it. that would be a good idea. Yeah. Uh, this thing. Now, this, I mean, that's. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Let Let's say you you're trying to buy something. Someone sends you an attachment with your quotation. You need to reply hmm. back to them, and you want to give them their PO. But you also want to include the quote. I'm getting so confused quote here. And the PO. I'm getting a headache. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the fucking Outlook does give you a headache. It's fucking ridiculous. Well. So if you want to do that, you have to open it up, save it, and reattach. I mean, it's fucking stupid. Yeah, well. And, and, and try yeah. to do all that from your fucking phone and not your computer. Oh, well, I, 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 I well, if I'm sent replying something on my phone, I never write it out anymore I dictate it yeah. and I find that I'm about a about 90 percent 95 percent accurate that way mm -hmm. and and if I do fuck up people who see your text 
go, hey, people fuck up and they're writing their text. Okay, you know, yeah. they just fill in whatever word they think you meant to put in there or something. Uh, unless it's something, of course, that's going to come back to bite you in the ass with the Me Too people 10 years from now, but, you know. I put in my signature on my phone. Please I didn't, excuse I, any grammar or... Yeah. I've been from my iPhone. I Please didn't, excuse any grammar. I, it's hard to type at 55 miles an hour. I swear to you, I didn't mean to say cunt. I meant to say count. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Bad choice. <laughs> so I, I got a thought today, and I told this to Marjorie, and I want to see what you think. Um, you know, I, she watches, again, she watches MSNBC, which is brain rot, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, would you agree with me, Charlie? I mean, they're really... I can't watch MSNBC, no. Yeah, yeah. And you'd like to because they have your opinion, right? They share your opinion. But oh, you feel yeah. like, they're, like they're, they're tickling your balls while they're doing the news, you know? <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, well, I mean, normally if somebody were tickling my balls while they were doing the news, I would like it, especially if it were Kirsten Welker. Is she hot or what? Anyway... Um, <laughs> Gee, I might get outed by the Me Too for that. Yeah, that'll ruin my career. Anyway, what career? Anyway, um, uh, where was I? What direction was I going in? I have no idea. Kristen Welker between the balls. Well, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, MSNBC. So she watches MSNBC all the time, and it, and the world is going to hell in a handbasket, and uh, uh, you know it's all over. And what kind of times do we live in? And it, and it is, you know, it certainly. I I don't disagree with her that things aren't good right now, but I'll tell you, I got when I go back to the fifties when I was growing up, and they had the House on American Activity Subcommittee, and people were losing their jobs because of of what political thoughts they had back in the 30s. That was pretty terrible. In, wouldn't you agree that that was pretty terrible in and of itself? It's not like we've gotten any better. It's just the nature of our evilness has changed. And so she watches this all the time and she's got a completely warped sense of the world around her. And then the latest one is, well, you know, we're going to have our the Republicans are going to take over after the elections, after the, the uh, midterm elections. And I go, OK, yeah, well, how? Why is that? And they said, well, that's what everybody's saying. Well, that's what everybody on MSNBC is saying. And the reason they're saying it, and this is kind of fake news, if you think about mm -hmm. it. The reason they're doing it is they don't want their viewers to become complacent by saying, it looks like we're a shoe-in. So what they're doing is they're giving the worst case scenario so that people will get out and vote, you know, Democratic. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think it's going to be that bad. Do you think it's going to be that bad, Josh? You're the big political wonk here. Um, I don't think it's going to be as bad as maybe some people think, you know, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've been frustrated lately with, you know, it's like they talk about Senate races and they, they keep talking about, you know, the Democrats would need to win two or whatever. And then they always talk about, you know, Pennsylvania and Nevada and what, and I just, but I'm like, you know, there is a Senate race in Ohio. They never talk about that one. And the Democratic candidate here is, I don't want to say he's favored to win, but it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a, basically a tie. Mm -hmm. And the Republican candidate is not a very good one. He's not very well liked, you know. So, well, you want to talk about terrible Republican candidates? I don't they don't talk Come on, you know, George is the perfect case. Well, yeah. yeah. Right. Why anybody, is that even close? Did anybody well, did anybody see Tucker yeah. Carlson the uh, clip of Tucker Tucker Carlson on his show? where he started railing by saying why people would want to vote for somebody who is intellectually barren or, or is a moron, essentially is what he was saying, like, yeah. uh, like Walker. I mean, that he actually has come out against Walker, came out against Marjorie Taylor Greene, saying well, anybody who thinks this is a good idea, and then you wonder why people get mad at the Republican Party. 
Yeah. And I went, well, I mean, well, well what's yeah, with that's... Tucker? Is he suddenly found religion or something or what? Yeah, I don't. So that's what I'm saying is I don't think that the, uh, I mean, I don't know if the Republicans will gain a majority because, I mean, none of us know that. I mean, we haven't had an election yet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, and I don't see like overwhelming uh, absolute evidence that it's coming. I mean, I, there are some indications, but none of them are strong and none of them are, I mean like like I said it's like they don't even calculate into any of this you know this race in Ohio yeah I mean and I don't understand why because if Tim Ryan is elected they flip that's a flip I mean it's yeah. currently held by Rob Portman and it would also give Ohio two Democratic senators for the first time in like let me I mean 30 years so like why is that not a bigger deal I mean, I don't know. I almost messaged, uh, you know, uh, Patrick and Kevin the other day, like, I don't know, maybe a week ago, you know, like, you know, uh, my stupid thing for this morning is I think Steve Kornacki is a fucking idiot. I, I get tired of him. Steve Kornacki? Yeah, yeah. Yes, because he talks. And, I mean, yeah. he talks about that same shit. Over I, I wish over for over once he would just wear a Shut up. If, if nothing more, to get our respect, wear a jacket. <laughs> and don't wear khaki pants on television. Hold down his sleeves. Huh? I mean, he, you know, Hold down his sleeves. <laughs> he'll go up there and talk for 20 minutes, and he, he never mentions this race right here. And like I said, I don't understand. I mean, the reason that it is is because they're pushing something that they want for some reason. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't get what it. They're pushing, what they're pushing is they're trying to push all the ones which are causing a, a problem. Okay, yeah. that that are really in contention. I mean, let's face it. Who is it in Ohio? Ryan and uh, who else? J.D. Vance. Well, Tim Ryan is running against that J.D. Vance. Yeah, yeah J.D. Vance, who wrote Hillbilly Elegy. Yeah, right. Because um, he came from the same home that you know all of us did here. So congratulations. Yeah, right. Fucking right. Bullshit, yeah. You know. I'm sorry. I'm Whatever. not a fucking hillbilly. Go fuck yourself. You know. I mean, I'm just not. I mean. Okay. But like anyway, any, anyway, that's not as interesting as the moron down in Georgia going up against the preacher, you know. You know, and like that one even bothers me because they go around making fun of, you know, the, the Fetterman in Pennsylvania and how he talks a little bit. Or by, and I'm like, have you ever heard fucking Herschel Walsh? Yeah. I mean, no, he here's the talk. thing that people don't understand in in <laughs> in, in Georgia. Okay, and that is that her, that uh, Fetterman, even after a stroke, okay, and with all his inabilities and his aphasia and all of that, is ten times brighter and alert than than uh, Walker. Okay, yeah, I mean, Herschel Walker can barely put seriously like a couple of coherent sentences together where he doesn't sound like a stereotypical nineteen twenties. Southern black farmer. The only know? two I things he the only spit tobacco at the end of everything. The only I two mean, things I, that Herschel Walker can put together are abortions. <laughs> yeah. 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 He doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, but my point is like, but I haven't made fun of him for that, and Democrats haven't made fun of him for that. I mean, you know, so that's what I mean. I see this stuff, you know, where some of the Republican candidates are, you know making fun of Fetterman or whatever. I mean, no, but it's you, a question of why, why you, well, you know, as bad as, off as Fetterman is, and he's not in great shape right now. I mean, he well, he, he well, has aphasia, and, it, you know, we have a guy here who had aphasia, still has it slightly, right? Uh, but yeah. uh, but Jeff is not uh, incapable of holding a discussion with us, you know. It, 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 people should not be affected by that. They should look at the fact that the opponent, <clears throat> opponent is more brain damage from being yeah. hit too many times in the head on a football field. Well, I mean, you know. but he's asking to be U.S. senator, not a fucking hostage negotiator. I mean, what? I mean, what? I mean, what, what? You know, what I'm saying, what's the the deal? I mean, so, I mean, look, I know. It, I mean, it is up to the voters, but I'm just saying, handicapped people of any sort can serve in the U.S. Senate. I mean, it's not. What's wrong with that? I mean, now if there's some voters, well, Herschel Walker is going up. We're we're mixing two know, different well, races here. Mm -hmm. Herschel right. Walker is going up against uh, what's his name, the uh, the preacher. Oh, uh, Warnock. Warnock. Yeah, Warnock. And and yeah. what we've got right. down in, in against uh, uh, what's his name is uh, 
um, uh, what's it? Is, uh, uh, Dr. Oz. Oz. Dr. Oz. Yeah, he, uh, right. yeah going up against. Uh, <laughs> I forgot his name again. Uh, no, no, the other guy. Um, we we're just talking about him. Oz, yeah. No, not Oz. Fetterman. 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 Yeah, because yeah, somehow I got mixed up there when we were talking about Fetterman against Hiram. Uh, against Hiram. I keep saying Hiram Walker. I keep thinking of the whiskey. Uh, Herschel <laughs> Walker against Herschel Walker, and and really it's you know it's Mehmet Oz against uh, 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 against Fetterman. Yeah. Uh, I mean uh, Mehmet Oz. I mean, man doesn't live in isn't live hasn't been living in New Jersey, you know. I mean, and and what has he done, you know, that qualifies him to run for senator? What what is it about him? The fact that he had a TV show and I'm going to vote for the guy who was on TV, you know, and gave me bad medical advice. I mean, he was telling people to buy snake oil, you know. Mm -hmm. The guy's just a snake oil salesman. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact that both of these are as close as they are and are in contention doesn't say a lot about us, does it? No, nope. it doesn't say a lot about us as good. It says a lot about us as negative. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have problems with people thinking certain things should disqualify someone from running because that's you're allowed to have those preferences as a voter. Mm -hmm. But uh, opponents or opposition, people, you know, parties. You shouldn't try to exploit those things, you know. So that's one part of it. But then, like you said, the fact that people are so hypocritical that they're willing to, you know. I, I mean, I'm just serious. I don't know how any decently minded, true believer uh, of a, a Christian in Georgia could vote for someone like Herschel Walker. I, I don't understand it. You know, and I came up and, and, and was forced to have some education in a parochial uh, a school, uh, Christian-based. So I am familiar with the doctrine and the teachings. I'm not saying I don't practice it, but I'm saying I, I, I have a good understanding of it. And I forget, 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 forget about I being a, stay, yeah, but forget, a, forget about right. being a religious person. How about just being a decent human being? Well, yeah. you know, I mean, it has nothing to do with God. It has nothing to do with religion. Right. But here's a guy who is hypocritical. He says he's against abortion, and then he paid for two of them. You know? Yeah. Oh well, I I I've got I found God. Well, you don't use that as your excuse. Well, but that's but that's not even what he's saying. He, he's denying that he ever did that. I would have more respect for it if he came out and he said, you know what, I did do that. I had affairs, uh, and I got women pregnant, and I pressured him to have an abortion, and that was wrong, and it was 20 years ago, and I've since been reformed. I would have more respect for that, right? That I would, you know. Yeah, it, look, that. yeah, but you see, you're you're assuming there's a certain intelligence there, okay? Uh, right. His best answer would have been, well, yes, I did get this woman uh, to have an abortion, uh, and she had one, but then later on she got pregnant again, and she had the baby. Uh, mm -hmm. So I had a change of heart. He could lie about that part of it, okay? Mm -hmm. But that would be the better answer. But he can't come up with those better answers because he hasn't got a brain to do it with. Well, plus well, he the, doesn't. Other, the other thing I mean, is that he's got these people standing behind him telling him, say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You know, he's well, yeah. got people it, it, standing it, behind him saying, lie, to, lie through your fucking teeth. I mean, That's first of all, he, he is too stupid to realize that he's being exploited and he's being yeah. used as their Negro. Just so they can send him to the U.S. Senate and exactly. be their Negro. I mean, <laughs> you, see, you know? see these guys standing behind him, going, you know, okay, say this, say that. You know, they probably could have gone out and found boy. any one of a number of black candidates who are intelligent and good and yeah. Republicans, uh, but they didn't want those because they right. can't control them. Correct. Okay. Because they'll get in, sent in the Senate and they'll vote their own conscience, whatever their conscience is. Here, you've got a guy that is so malleable that you can get him to do anything you want him to do. You know? That's exactly what I'm saying, is that they've got, they've got him on a leash. That's, yeah. They've got him exactly. and the people on a leash. 
That's exactly why they uh, chose him, and that's exactly why they have not abandoned him. Yeah. I mean, they're willing to put a morally... Have you, have, have you seen all these Republicans that come up, no. uh, go to his rallies and stand by him? Exactly. I mean, how yeah. I mean, you know, how, Lindsey Graham is down there doing Did you see the look on Lindsey Graham's face, though, while, yeah. uh, while, while he was talking? Yeah. It was like, what's this guy saying? I don't understand a word he's saying. Yeah, and then he turns around and backs him. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's why I've always said, you know, don't ask me to respect some of these members of the opposition. And by the way... I mean, it's not the, personal, but I don't respect them. I don't. Cor correct me if I'm wrong, but the last time I looked, the job of senator isn't to run a ball 40 yards down a field and get a you know, get get a touchdown. Uh, I I just don't think that that's the qualities you need. You know, and by the way, he was a Heisman winner. What forty years ago? Yeah, nineteen eighty. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, come on, that's well, forty two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He I hadn't mean, done shit since. I mean, the only I mean, thing that's... he is, he's a Georgia hero. Okay, that's it. Plain and simple. You know. So I, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. But I, and 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 the fact that Oz, I mean, come on, you know. Uh, well, you, we were talking about this the other night, Jeff. You knew him, right? And, oh, yeah. and, and I worked with him at Sirius XM, and everybody oh, thought he was a bit major asshole. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you know, I mean, I, but I just. I, I just think that I, I, what I hate about Republicans right now, and it's not Republicans, it, it's, it's, well, it is Republicans because most of them are this way. So they have all fallen into line, for instance, behind Trump, behind the theory that the election was stolen. I mean, what do they want to become? The party of complete, utter idiocy? Or as I like to think of it, the party of Phil? You know. They want to win no matter what. Yeah, but I mean, how bad do you want to win? Do you want to win at the expense of your own dignity? Yeah. You know, and and uh, I mean, I'm I'm I've always been a, a great purveyor of the two party system. I like two parties when the two parties are really having an intelligent fight. Okay, but it's not that anymore. It's not that way any longer. You know, we can't expect that if Joe Biden wants thus and thus, that Republican, any Republican is going to vote for it. What, what kind of, what kind, that's why nothing gets done. Let's get to something else here. This is, this is the one that really. depressing. Huh? That's depressing. Yeah. Uh, we have one person here from the Bay Area, uh, and um uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband was attacked in his home at 2.30 in the morning yep. uh, by a gentleman who's going, where's Nancy? Yep. And then beat the hell out of him yep. with a hammer. Oh, he wound up going into surgery for concussion and things like that and a broken hand. And uh, He's now out. He's supposed to, he's gonna be he's going to be fine. He's going to fully recover. He's 82, so I don't know yep. how much you can recover at 82, but, you know. Um, I, I think that you know you. I know if I had Phil here, he'd go, "Well, you know, you can't blame the Republicans on uh, for a guy who's nuts." You know, sure you can. Yes, you can because that guy's nuts enough to believe what the Republicans are saying. Because you, if anybody who tells me this is going to turn out any other way that the, but that this guy had a hard on for Nancy Pelosi because of, you know, where she stood in on on. Uh, the issues of the day, I, you'll really surprise me, you mm -hmm. know. And it, to say he wasn't egged on by Republicans, which I'm going to say, is to be is to be naive. Or the January sixth. Well, yeah. January sixth is a result of the Republicans. Correct. You know, going along with a moron by the name of Donald Trump. <laughs> Literally yeah. chanting the same thing they were chanting that day. Yeah. So here you've got a case of and not even Nancy Pelosi, her husband, who's at home. And the reason why you say, well, why didn't he have, didn't they have security? No, because the only person that gets security is the uh, senator. 
or the congressman, uh, not their spouses. So when she goes back to San Francisco, yeah, she's got security with her and they watch them at the home. When she comes back to Washington, they leave, he's alone. Yep. Well, I think we're gonna have to change that. You know, all, of, all the families of all the people in Congress are gonna have to be, have people watching them, you know. Nice uh, job, Republicans. Huh? Nice job, Republicans, cost us more money. Well, you yeah. know, they're gonna be the first ones yelling that all of them should be getting 24 hour protection for their families. Mm -hmm. You know that, don't you? Uh-huh. And yet they they, uh, they caused this situation. I know, I know, Good Phil. If you're, if you're listening, there. Phil, I know, yeah, it's, a, it's the guy who did it's fault. Sure. But, you know, sure. if, I, if, 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 if I put a gun in somebody's hand and say, here, go shoot somebody, and then they take the gun out of, out of my hand and put it in their hand and go shoot somebody, uh, I, I'm not guilty, too? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was the end product of all that's been going on lately and all this hate and all this division that's been created. Um, and I'd like to say that, yeah, the Democrats are terrible too, but they're not, you know. If anything, the de Democrats let people roll over them, yeah. you know. Uh, so, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's too much, too much to believe, hmm. you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's stupid. I mean, you know, they, led to this with their constant you know uh, warmongering type talk about eliminating yeah. their opposition I mean I heard a clip Out today of Congress, some guy it's, it's some, the, the governor of somewhere it. campaigning saying you know oh of course this violence is bad but we're going to send Nancy home to be with him you know and then everybody yeah. I mean well first of all you're not because you know there's no chance that she's not getting reelected yeah. and second of all why? But that's my what I'm saying. Why do you have to say that? Yeah. Can she, you just stop with the violence? I mean, why do you yeah. have to? She represents. Back on. She rep represents that's a con congressional mm. district that's in San Francisco. Yeah. If I'm I mean, not mistaken, and well, uh, there's no way she's yeah. not going to get reelected. Yeah. You know. Well, let's. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but but why do you have to say something like that? I mean, why? I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I, I don't, for for law and order type people, I mean, it doesn't matter. They aren't for, they, but they right. aren't for law and order. You know, they really aren't. <laughs> you know, it's... It, Look what they had to do for the justices. I mean, they still got to have to protect them now. Well, yeah. with the way they've been voting on stuff, I think they've been protected since Roe v. Wade, all of them, 24-7, you know. Still. Yeah. But I mean, and let's face it, Nancy Pelosi, this, she's a congressperson. She's not even a senator. You know, she wasn't appointed for six years. I mean, why go to their house looking to get Nancy when really she gets elected every two years? You know, you can work on well, getting I mean, that not know, to happen. Speaker of the House, and they, that's, the, that's the names that they constantly <clears throat> banter about, you know? Yep. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and all that, you know? Yep. It's just, I mean, Third line. You, know, uh, you know, her husband got a DUI and, you know, he didn't get the same punishment or, I mean, whatever, you know, I'm just saying, I mean, but, you know, violence like that and, uh, you know, this sort of mob mentality is, it's, it can't happen. It cannot take the place of our regular system or that's what you descend into. And, and that's what I've said a million times before is, I understand that our our country was sort of brought to fruition through a lot of you know mob violence and these kinds of things and then like i said immediately after we got there our our those people put a system of government in place so that that was never required ever again <laughs> you know they, they they recognized that the path they took to get where they were was ugly at times and said, you know, we really should, you know, not ever do this again. This stuff was unnecessary. Things got out of hand, mm -hmm. you know. So you dishonor the wishes and the memory mm -hmm. of your founders when you 
think that the way in America to to achieve your political mm-hmm. gain or to make your political point is through violence. I mean, it's you know, it's uh, let me it's get not American. Yeah, let period. me get let me get to another story that uh, came out today. Uh, it, uh, is that uh, Elon Musk has finally bought Twitter for forty two billion dollars, pocket change. Uh, and uh, again, Marjorie goes crazy. She goes, oh, he's going to let Trump back on, you know. And I'm going, so? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, I don't think, uh, from everything he said, that I'm very worried about him running Twitter. Uh, all he said is that he feels that it should be a digital Hyde Park. You know, it should be a digital town square, I think is the term he used. I used uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know Hyde Park because that's a square in New- London where people on Sunday can all get up on soapboxes and say anything they want to without fear of reproach uh, but he just wants it to be more democratic he wants it to just be f- more freewheeling and open for people to have reasonable conversations and that he doesn't feel he feels for instance lifetime bans are wrong he feels they're moral, is how he put it. So, yeah, uh, Trump might get back on. What, are you all afraid of Trump saying stuff? You know? What do you think about Musk and his democratization of Twitter, which he feels has, for a long time, really been heavily censoring people? Anybody have hmm. an opinion on that? I mean, I, I don't know if they censor people that much i mean i i don't know they i mean maybe they do i i mean the only people that i think that have been censored are people that openly called for for you know violence you know yeah like we saw today for example i mean you know despite the fact that his company has had some success i don't find must to be a uh a good person, a moral person. I mean, I think he's a, kind of a, a wine ass and an idiot, you know? I mean, personally, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I take a slightly, I take a slightly different approach to him. Um, he's, he's what a lot of people with a lot of money are. And that is, you can't shut them up. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. they want to get in the public. Uh, he's addicted to the spotlight. There's no question about that. Right. But but the stuff he's done has inalterably changed and uh, the, the world. I mean, we have electric cars now. Everybody's putting out electric cars. But why is that? It's because Musk had the vision and the guts to really go ahead full force with an electric automobile. When he first came out with Tesla, I think you all remember people were deriding him. Oh, that'll never go. What, you're sticking a bunch of batteries together and you're going to make a car go? That's what I was saying, it too. But he made it work. And now every car company has it coming out. And you have states like California saying by 1935, we want to be all electric. Um, That is something that will help to save the planet. All right? His space program. Uh, Unquestionably, in the future, we're going to look back on it and say, that was very important, you know, because the life, the dependency of life on Earth started, uh, the ability to continue life here on Earth started with those programs and not with NASA because NASA just sent people up and then they did shipping and hauling for about 30 years. And he was the first one to come along and say, no, I'm going to put these things up there. I'm going to have a viable business doing it hauling people up to the space station, but I'm also going to send the thing onto the moon and I'm going to set up a colony on the moon. And this is a guy with great vision. And no matter how you feel about him personally, you know, do we ever really like the visionaries? I mean, we, you know, we we come to really get to find them disgusting after a while. You know, I'm always interested by these people. I like to hear what they have to say and what they're going to do. Well, I think Cause, Musk's cause they do stuff that others won't. Yeah. So I, I really like Musk on that level. I mean, I don't have to like him as a person. He's kind of creepy, 
really. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in, nevertheless, uh, that level of creepiness doesn't matter when it comes to, well, what has he done? Oh, well, he started everybody making electric cars. What? He started sending rockets to the moon. He's put up, he's put up satellites with communications literally ringing the earth, and it's the only satellite coverage the Ukraine has right now. So, you know, when you put this guy down, eh, you got you gotta you know, it's kinda you gotta take the good with the bad. Mm-hmm. You I know. mean you can if you want. I mean it, it why on earth our government would ever trust him with things like that, I don't understand. They should be taking care of those things. Well but the government doesn't have to trust him. The, I mean the government the government doesn't have to trust him. He's a private company. He goes ahead and he's building these rockets. He's, he's going to get to the moon and he's going to do it for his company and also serving mankind at the same time. You can do both, you know. Uh, well, maybe. I mean, using, but they, they pay him using, for the use of technology that they need for things like satellites and for things like space, and they need to be taking care of that themselves because what guarantee do they have that he won't secretly sell that same technology to the Chinese or the Russians? Right for weaponization purposes, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I, I don't think that he would. I think he likes it being a wholly American activity. I I don't think he's an American patriot at all. I think he's an. I don't. He's no different than Trump. He's for himself. Yeah, he's, no, not, I he's, think about him. He what? wouldn't. He wouldn't give a fucking nickel of his own to help this country. What? 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 He, what, he, what, he, he what will do it to enrich himself. What'd you say, Kevin? I think the same way of him. I think that if he if they gave him twice as much money for it, he'd take it. Well, I think he would in a heartbeat. Well, of course. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but then they're using it against. But so would you, and so would I, and so would you. you know, any I of us. I wouldn't. I wouldn't lift a fucking finger to help the Russians or the Chinese. Yeah, exactly. Against oh, the oh you're States. talking about uh, the, the Russians. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The technology. Well, so far, yeah, so the far. And then it was either keep it here or sell it to them for twice so, as much. Yeah, but so far. I wouldn't put it past them to sell it. So to. far, there's no indication that that's on his agenda. No, it's not now, but. When the mighty dollar speaks, he swallows, you know? I don't know. You know, one day I woke up and all of a I sudden... I would hope not. One day I woke up and all of a sudden this guy was the richest man in the world. And yeah, I said, I said, I, I, yes, I said, when did Trump, that happen? Supposedly. And you know what? You know how he got to be number one? Yeah. By not trying. By just doing stuff. And somehow the money started rolling in. He started a car company, and it be, it's become one of the most successful car companies around. The harder they grow, the harder they mm-hmm. fall. Well, you know, we'll see. You know, but all I'm uh, saying is that when you get down to the Twitter thing, I I don't think he, you know, so what if he lets Trump back on Twitter? Yeah, personally, Do I, I think that's harmless, really. I it is harmless. Whatever. Exactly. Exactly. It's a fucking platform, and he can sit there and, and, and let people... I, 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 you don't I, have to go there. His attitude is also why should we, uh, why should we um, um, uh, penalize Trump indefinitely? Is All that he's doing is is changing, that, uh, changing Twitter into another parlor or whatever it is? Well, I don't think he's going to do that. I think what he wants to do, and I think that it's either going to make him money or it's not going to make him money, is that one of the plans he has is to change. Twitter to a subscription service. Uh, That's fine. I won't buy it. Well, I, don't even I, think if, I think if tomorrow mm-hmm. Twitter went subscription, I don't think it would have the following it has now. Yeah. It only has this following because it's free. I don't use it and it's free. Mm-hmm. I got it on my phone and I look at it about once every three or four months. I think I've tweeted maybe three times in my life. Probably. Me too. Um, three more than I have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Facebook I use, I, but I only use it because it's functional. You know, it serves yeah. my purpose of publicizing the show and, hey, there's no show tonight, you know, and things yeah. like that, and putting the sh- uh, posting the shows up there. But I, otherwise, I don't have any. I can spy on my kids. Hmm? <laughs> what? I can spy on my kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, I mean, I, uh, I, and I probably should use Twitter more. I mean, I could, should post this show every night on Twitter. Uh, I think maybe it is. I, I have no idea. I'm posting in so many different places. I don't know how many are. Yeah, it's where. probably there, huh? It's probably there. 
I, I, I don't care, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, I, so I, I uh, but I, I, getting back to just the main thing we were talking about tonight, I've seen worse times in this country when it came to throwing the democracy aside. And the 50s were a good example of that. It was really terrible back then. Just go back and, and look at what went on then. Look at those House on American Activities subcommittees. Look at, at McCarthy, you yeah. know. I mean, just the, the McCarthy hearings were just appalling. Yeah. So if you think the Republicans are bad now, boy, they were really shitting up a storm back then. Yeah. We hope that things are cyclical and we just get through it. That's the whole thing. Well, you know, I just, I think this is a little more permanent. Uh, they, you you know, know, yeah, yeah. It, it's a different kind of cycle, I think. Some uh, Something like 40% of media, people, you know, when posed the question, said they felt there might be another civil war eventually. Yeah. You know, that's well, they, how bad you know, things are. But it's possible with all these nutcases out here. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you know, I mean... Well, my feeling was where we made our big mistake is when they wanted to secede from the Union way back when, we should have let them, you know. I don't think it would be a full civil war, but I think it would be, a, it'd be a, a, an uprising that would be knocked down. Well, there is a thinking that some of those states may turn around and say we want to secede. And I think this time we should let them, you know. Uh, but I want to. It sure would be a mess. All I know is, God... Let's just get these midterms over with. We're going to get through the general, too. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, it's been, it's been really nice tonight. Thank you, Jeff, for being here. Thank you, Kevin, for being here. Josh, always a pleasure. And Charlie, this is like an intelligent panel, okay? It, may, it kind of almost my dream panel. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Everybody, just uh, have a nice night, everybody, and uh, let's let's wave goodbye, and I will wave goodbye at you. Okay, right. there they go, folks. There right. they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, and uh, we, they're uh, they're gone. All right, uh, I will be back here on uh, Monday at four o'clock in the afternoon for Alex Bennett's pop up program. Bunch of nice people having nice talk, uh, kind of like we had tonight, actually. And also, uh, let's see here. We'll be here again uh, on uh, next uh, Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. Uh, take care of yourself, everybody. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>